This is our second lesson on, in Adobe InDesign and uh, uh, in this lesson we'll start manipulating text and creating style sheets. Uh, in our last lesson you remember we started a document, set up our columns, our part of our grid here, and then we uh, flowed some text from page to page and we can see the flow here uh, with our text threads. That's real handy to see that. Now let's talk about te the text itself and do some formatting of text and I'm going to zoom in here uh, on my text so we can see what we're doing. Uh, this is the standard uh, default text and if we go up here to our control panel and we have the text tool selected you see we have two choices for our control panel character formatting and paragraph formatting and if we go to character formatting we can see that it comes in as Minion Pro which is an Adobe default it comes in at 12 point and it comes in at automatic letting remember automatic letting is a percentage usually 20 percent of the point size of the type and so we're going to set this type up with absolute letting. We're also going to make it fit the column a little better. First thing I'm going to do is select all my type. That was just by typing Command or Control A. You also can um, uh, select type this way in InDesign. If you click once, it just places your cursor. If you click twice, it selects a word. If if you click three times it selects a line, four times selects a paragraph, and five times selects all the type in this text uh, thread. Now remember it's in the text thread so it's also selecting the type on page two and on page three. Okay, It's all selected. Now that's an important thing to remember because sometimes you'll have type that's outside the frame that you can't see and if you do a select all command or control A or five clicks you'll make sure you get all the text in the story. All right what are we going to do with this text? Well first of all I think uh, anytime you have three columns that are fairly narrow like this uh, you're going to find it's going to be much more comfortable with 10 point type and with 10 point type I want to go to a letting that's uh, a little bit tighter on a fairly narrow column so I'm going to use 11 point letting Okay, and I'm going to select a font that's a, a better print font. I'm going to go up here and choose Adobe Garamond Pro and regular face, typeface. And uh, now we can see what that type is looking like. It's looking pretty good. Now my this is all done with the character formatting controls and now we use the paragraph controls and this allows us to select an alignment centered, flush left, or what we call ragged right. It's right. The ragged is on the right side because it's all flush along the left side of the column. Flush right and justified type. And lots of times for print we use justified, although that requires further adjustment to prevent what we have here, what we call a river of white space. We have several of those here. Uh, Let's start out with flush left and we'll go from there. Now we also can set our first line indent which is important for doing any kind of print document where you want paragraphs. So that's this uh, control right here. First line left indent and we're going to make it one pica. Very amateurish if you use big wide indents. The standard indent in print is about a pica. Okay. Here's what our type looks like now. It's looking pretty good. And so now we have this as our basic body text. We can go to our paragraph styles uh, control panel. And you notice that it, it says basic paragraph. And basic paragraph would be the default for this page. And so what we want is we want our body text to be our basic paragraph. And the way we do that is by again we'll select all here and we're going to go up to on our paragraph styles uh, panel here we're going to go to new paragraph style excuse me we're not going to go to new paragraph we're going to go to 
redefine style. And what that's going to do is it's going to make the default for this page our basic paragraph. Now let's say that after doing that we decide that we want to justify our text after all. We can alter our style sheet in one of two ways. We can just select a paragraph that we want here. Here's one right here. And we can go up to our alignment and make it justified. And then we can go to our paragraph style palette. Notice there's a plus sign now because we've altered the basic style. And we can redefine the style. And now all of those, everywhere that style's been applied, it will change it. So now they're all justified. Okay, it's a real handy uh, way to do it. Now we're going to create lots of styles as we go along. And so uh, let's start out by doing one for a subhead. And we might want to make our subhead so that it is not indented. And we might want to make it with a little space above. And we might, might want to make it with a little space below, but not as much, because we want to keep related elements closer together. Maybe we will make the point size a little bigger. And I'm going to adjust this size just a little bit. And then we would make it bold. And there's our subhead. So now we can click on this and go up here to New Paragraph Style and call this subhead and you notice that it didn't apply that style here so we would have to click on it and now if we want to put in a subhead we just click the style and it applies it and again we can change the characters the the we can change some of the parameters of this style and then redefine the style. Here's another thing we can do. We can select part of the type that has that style and then we can go over to this palette and double click on it and it allows us to change basic character formats and again when we make a change here it will apply to all the uses of that style. I'll give you an example here. Uh, I'm going to go to um, justification and you remember it says uh, we had it as justified type uh, in our see it would be under indents and spacing uh, left justify is what we want for this okay we don't want it to be justified what we could also change our spacing notice here it says space before and space after so we can change that and we can also um, do something like apply a paragraph rule. See that? We can change anything we want here uh, in this palette. And um, then it will change that style entirely as we go along here. So um, go back here to the paragraph rules change this rule to something a little bit more palatable and you see it changed this subhead too okay so there's two ways you can change you can alter a, a style sheet and when you do it changes that throughout the entire document so you have a if you had a document of a hundred 120 pages and you wanted to change your subheads it would change every subhead every instance of that style throughout the document it's a very powerful uh, tool for handling type okay so Here's what we have so far. If I wanted to put a headline on this, I would probably draw have to draw another text box so that I could span all of the columns. Notice that it it sets this up in the basic paragraph style. So again, the first time I want to do a headline, I would have to go through the process of changing my font getting rid of the indent here 
Um, changing the type size on my control panel. That's my leading. Here's my type size, like so. And I can place it where I want, and then it will span the columns. Now, you notice I, I can see my columns here and everything. If I uh, go to my View menu to Preview, excuse me, it's right here, Preview. It shows you what it looks like without the guides and so forth. And then if you want the guides back, you just click there. Okay. I want to talk about one more thing, and that is the baseline grid. And this is the key to doing what we call a leading grid with our uh, with Adobe InDesign. A baseline grid is a grid that uh, you can display by going to the View menu to show baseline grid right there. And the baseline grid default is 12 points. So you can see it doesn't line up on the baseline grid here. Okay. If I were to select a paragraph and go to the paragraph control panel, you see these two little symbols do not align to baseline grid, align to baseline grid. You can see now that it aligns, but it also messes up my leading because the baseline grid is 12 points and my leading is 11 points. How do we fix that? It's very simple. We go to preferences under the InDesign menu to grids and we change the increment for the baseline grid to 11. So now it matches our leading and we have basically what is essentially a leading grid. And if I want all my type to line up on the leading grid, uh, I just again choose this symbol here and now I can go into my basic paragraph and redefine the style and now all my type will line up automatically on the baseline grid. All the type on every page, everything will line up perfectly. Okay, very powerful tool. Align to baseline grid. And now we have basically what's a leading grid. So if I were to adjust this, it would be very easy for me to adjust this a line at a time. If I were to put a picture in here, a text frame or a picture frame like this, I can do it so many lines of type and it will come in just perfect and everything will fit in there nice and neat. So that's how we line it. So basically this is our, a good, right here we have some basic typography, a headline, a subhead, a basic paragraph style and we've aligned it to the baseline grid and in our next lesson we'll talk more about how to place pictures and how to do some more advanced type handling.